All right, the next one here is from Michael. And this one is a good one. Um, Michael ended up sending me like three or four emails going on on, on this project that he's working on, um, on trying to make a motorcycle frame. And what he sent me uh, was actually that he had watched a, uh, oh yeah, that was the first video with the hyper, how do you pronounce this? Hyper, poor, I gotta, all right, never mind. Um, so Jacob Anderson, definitely uh, check this guy out. Um, has a bunch of videos. He does a, a, a video on how to create a chopper frame. You see this cool chopper frame? And I will say that, um, so Jacob, uh, thank you for sharing your content. He does have a Udemy course, so you can actually get deep into this whole tutorial. I haven't watched Jacob's tutorial, um, but um, one of the things, and he does some really nice rendering here in the end too, so nice work. Um, Jacob, but the question I'm getting from Michael is that early on, um, what Jacob does to create these frames is that he's using a s surfacing sketches to create kind of like uh, this development here. And I don't want to, I don't want to steal anything away from Jacob. Uh, definitely go and check out uh, his channel, Jacob Anderson, uh, for this. But I can maybe just, you know, uh, show a little bit about what the principles are of what um, what Jacob is doing here. Really, what it is, and it's, it's, it's I would call it a little bit old school. Um, and it's using surfaces to create compound 3D sketches. Um, so it's funny, if we go into Fusion, that um, somebody just emailed me earlier, or messaged me on Facebook or somewhere on social, reached out to me and was asking me about the surfacing command. I was kind of like, why would I even bother trying to figure surfaces out? And I, my comment is like, I agree, like with the solid workspace especially with the sculpt workspace involved here, using surfaces is really not that uh, common anymore. However, there is some things about surfacing, and again, like I said, it's kind of old school, but there's certain things you can do with it that is actually pretty cool. So this is what we're gonna jump in here with uh, hopefully inspire you guys to do a little bit uh, something like what, um, what Jacob is doing here to utilize to make a bike frame or sweep kind of like a development sweep like this. So the idea is, and and again, if you're brand new to Fusion, I don't want to scare you away at all um, because surfacing used to be considered high level or complex, um, but surfacing is really not that, uh, that complex. It's just um, when we do, let me just do something here and, and waste a little bit of time. Um, if I go in right now and I create a sketch in the solid space and I create a sketch here and I'm just going to, I'm going to hit a, uh, two point rectangle and, uh, let's make it 50 by 50. Okay. Um, and let's extrude it. So we're going to go back in and do an extrusion and let's, uh, select it here and let's make it 50. So now we have a sketch and we have an extrusion. Now, hopefully most of you guys out there feel pretty comfortable with this, right? Um, like, yeah, yeah, got this. If you're new to Fusion, even then, I hope that this makes you feel pretty good. A sketch and an extreme. Now, I'm just gonna do this for just to show um, really how CAD works, mechanical CAD works. Um, and you let me know in the comments area if this is good. Um, if I open up a new document, so blank document, instead I'm gonna go into the surfacing command, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna open a sketch, and I'm going to uh, do a two point rectangle and I'm going to do 50 by 50, same thing. Now, instead of going over to the solid workspace and hit extrude, I'm going to be in the surface workspace and I'm going to hit extrude. Okay. Select that same area and go 50 up. Now, when I hit okay to this, you will see that we have something that is very close to our solid model but it's just surfaces, it's just a shell. So the biggest thing about surfacing is that it's just shells, um, non-thick, paper thin, no thickness walls. But it actually means that if I go in now on this on the surface body, and I go in and say, I'm gonna create a patch on this top face, 
and do the same thing on the bottom like this now we actually kind of have the same cube as you see here but the difference is that this is solo solid this surface body is still uh, hollow inside of it. we just kind of put the shells around it now what we could do was we could select the whole thing and we could go in and say stitch and when we go in and stitch it we actually have the option to turn it into select the whole thing here um just want to make sure I select it all um that now it will become a solid body okay so right now in in cad these two are identical got it uh because it turned into a solid but notice what how many operations this took down here versus this this took two this took three but this is actually what the software is doing in the background so when you are executing this simple one, the solid is actually doing all these stuff. It's extruding up and it's being like, okay, let me close each end and then let me see if I can turn it into a solid. So this is what the software is doing in the background. So I hope this kind of, if you are fairly new to a Fusion or to Mechanical CAD, just so you know, this is what the software does in the background. All right, sorry, I got a little, uh, I get carried away. <laughs> So let's go into the motorcycle frame that Jacob did and Michael is trying to do. So what Jacob does is he's actually using surfacing to create a development that he then can use for to turn it into a solid uh, frame. So if I go in and I say I'm going to create a sketch here, and again I'm not I'm, I don't want to steal uh, Jacob's thunder because Jacob has his own channel and he's doing you know, sharing his thing. But um, just to give you a little bit of a taste of it, and hopefully enough, Michael, for you to kind of maybe just attack this on your own or get a little bit further. So I'm going to do a center slot. What is the standard sketch tool we have, right? And uh, let me just make this like 120 like this. Um, and, uh, and let me just extrude this. Now, again, I'm going to extrude it as a surface, just like I did before. So it's really just... It's really just the shell. Now, um, if I go in and I now open a new sketch, so forget about this thing right now. Actually, we could hide it if we wanted to. Um, open a new sketch on the side view. Well, actually, I'm going to turn it back on so I can see what I'm doing. And let's draw a line from the center to, uh, to about the same point where uh, this finished here. Go a little bit past it just because. Um, so now we have a, a new line. That line is sitting right on the center here. Um, and then we could go in and do something like a three point arc, for example, and just draw an arc up like this here. And I'm actually gonna make it be tangent. Now, um, what I could be tempted to do now is to say, all right, let me P for project and select this. So I get kind of the end point here and let's make these two vertical right uh, i'm still leaving some things underdefined but really what we have right now if i finish this is that we have kind of created this shape if we go and we then extrude that out so we're making two different extrusions so let's select this oh extrude that out uh, and let's just go one side you now see how these two surface bodies are kind of interacting or you know they're interfering with each other right here right we got the two surface bodies they're kind of interfering with one another now because it's surface bodies if i go in and i trim them click trim and i select this the first one we did and i trim that with the second one we did and hit okay then you will see the second one kind of got shortened but now we have this this development curve right here from where those two were, were, were cut short, right? Where they're intersecting. Now we could use that curve to create that compound development. So if I go in and open, so now I'm gonna just hide these two for a second. Well, let's leave, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Sorry. Let's go in and open a new sketch on that same phase we did before. And let's hit P for project and steal that edge. 
and start a circle on that face. I don't think we want to make it 10 millimeters. So now we have a circle. Now we could use traditional um, sweet command and say that this is my my profile and then my pad is going to be that ad. So I can now select that ad. So I'm just going to turn off chain selection. So I select each segment. And I'm not selecting that edge of it. Well, that's interesting. I can't select that end there. Hang on. So we got that and we got that development there. Um, Oh, huh, I'm not sure why I can't select that edge. Oh, maybe it's because it's stopping right there. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Let's go back and let's try again. Not revolve. Let's go in and do a sweep. It was me. Um, so we're going to turn off chain selection. We're going to select uh, the profile. And then the path is this edge. See, what happened was that there's actually a bitty, bitty sliver down there because of my development. That edge. And that is, that's what I wanted. Um, and hit OK to that. And if I turn these surface bodies off, now look what I got. I got a, a using that development to do this. So now you could go in and do something like a, uh, a mirror. And if we select the bodies, this body, and we mirror that over this plane here. And now we have maybe not a motorcycle frame, but we kind of got that... Um, we somewhat got that that development there. So utilizing um, these surfaces can help you create compound uh, angles like that. And again, if you're looking at Jacob's video, uh, what I surely would recommend, you can see that he's actually, I think he's using more surfaces than just two. So I just use two, but you can use three and you can become become better and closer um, onto, uh, onto those. Hope that was useful. If it was, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. If it wasn't, Thumbs down. It's okay. Um, love your comments. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would truly appreciate that.